Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, featuring today a one versus one on Wrecked Train again. Yes, indeed, we've got another interesting game right here on Wrecked Train. In one side, we shall be seeing better run or hide, fighting for the Panzer Elite, opposing him shall be 2 1. Chewy, <coughs> I mean, anyways. And we are seeing a three engineer start out for 2 1. He is going to be sort of trying to seize a bit more territory early on, but I'm probably not going to go for that heavy start like Pepsi did. Uh oh, Le Pepsi, if you will. Two Panzer Grenadiers out, and we are going to be seeing Better Runner Hike fighting for the second SS Panzer Division. And 2 1 fighting for the. Oh, I don't know. Let's just casually say it's the first armored division. We are seeing the engineers spreading out. He's He's actually going for four engineers. Fascinating. Would not have expected that, but there you go. Some persons, you know, like to play differently than everybody else, and that's fair enough. That is fair enough. And we are seeing the Panzer Gunners pushing on pretty hard early on. Engineers moving on their own. The engineers were, you know, not really quite like the German pioneers, were sort of more actual engineers. Yes, they also could expect to see combat, but they weren't really, you know, heavily trained towards it. They were more like, you know, Closer to false grenades in a certain sense, you know, not really tough troops. Well, I suppose the false were better equipped with that, never mind. I mean, again, not quite the equivalent. Pioneers generally would outclass them in those cases where the engineers would be sent in. It was generally out of desperation. For example, one case where an armor division had to go in with only engineers to support it since everybody else were dead. Engineers that are getting pushed a bit quickly back by the Panzer Grenadiers. Doing a nice job for the far land. Two Ketten crowds out here for better runner hide. Ketten crowd coming under fire up here though by the engineers. There's sat machine guns pinging away at the tiny little tractor as it was. Essentially, you know, basically meant to initially sort of carry things for the Fort Jamaica and air landing divisions. It was later on basically used for other things. And in some cases actually used for as a transport vehicle for infantry. So only one battalion for a reconnaissance unit actually had them. We are seeing three Panzer Grenadiers moving out. Kettenkrad here heavily damaged, going for the cutoff point right there again. Sort of the dichotomy in the east. It's there's the higher fuel point, the only sort of medium, but it's also a bit hard to hold. There's not really any buildings to hold. On the other hand, in the west, more buildings but less fuel. So again, that's rather what can make this interesting map a bit more interesting. Also, there's also all the munitions here in la less amounts. Fuel, but still, I mean, it's sort of a thing that you want. This is generally more resource rich, west, safer. So, again, that's all what it comes down to. You know, do you want to be safe or do you want to you know, have lots and lots of goodies? Panzer's here, they're getting caught out. Jurgen, Hans, and Fritz escaping the wrath of the riflemen. But more Panzer guys are pushing up. Better run or hide off. Co is, of course, trying to sort of focus his Panzer guys, thus getting the most out of them. In the meanwhile, 2 1 is sort of going for a much more fluid strand, he's sort of trying to be everywhere again, sort of trying to harass, and if better run or hide, just focus down his pants, because that's going to work to a certain extent, because again, then his pants can't be everywhere. So that, so that is rather what, of course, can work out for 2-1, if he pulls it off correctly. Then he can, of course, lay down a lot of pressure, and they, of course, can force better run or hide, pants to run constantly about the map. And of course, he's doing a lot of harassment. He's, you know, not really trying to sort of stand and fight. He's not, you know, really saying, Hold your ground, men, against these damnable crowds. He's, you know, All right, he's on us. Let's get running, lads, again. And then he's basically just moving else on to the next point, on to the next fuel point, on to the next resource point. Basically trying to sort of deny the Panzerly resources. He's basically, you know, trying to sort of delay any sort of armored cars, anything like that. Flamethrowers being equipped. Also a bit something you usually see when you're in the four engineer side. You see a lot of flame for us getting equipped. And an engineer squad went down to the Panzer Grenadiers. Others though are moving in against the flame for engineers. And there we go, it's a press of volley from the Gewehr 43, sending them scurrying back home. So Uncle Sam. And meanwhile, we are seeing here a bit of an attempt at the cutoff point right there, although again, resources here are connected still. Even then, it will mean a bit less population, of course, a little less manpower, although very little less. Very, very little less. And we are seeing a supply it up. He's probably going straight for an armored car. Would not be surprising. And of course, there's also the internal threat of the anti-tank half which is pretty much always to expect. But even then, if you can't get it off in 
and possibly do some good damage. I mean, you can really make a Panzerlick commander stay very, very depressing. And these engineers are playing a dangerous game of hide and seek. Because usually the guy who's doing the seeking is not equipped with a German battle rifle. Well, German rifle. Bolt action, even. Panzerlick still are holding out. And there we've got a large charge. He's sort of climbing out a bit more, just trying it. And he's, in fact, getting one of the Panzerlick squads on its own. They unfortunately leaving us a little less disposed as well. Now things are a bit more changed out. Better run or height has, of course, now been forced to sort of spread out. And then, of course, comes the punch. Again, better run or height, spread out. Then the punch sort of striking some of the more vulnerable on their own troops. Now, of course, he's spreading out again after that punch. He's again, he's not really, you know, interesting in a large, you know, contest of strength for the Panzer League. The Panzer Gunners are going to win out that. So he's going to use what he does have, which is a certain amount of mobility and, of course, numbers. He's going to use his numbers against the less numerous Panzer Gunners. And certainly by this stage of the war, the Germans were generally outnumbered. The divisions did tend to have a large amount of depletion. Even though they, of course, did their best to sort of raise alarm companies and replacement battalions into the front line and all that. Panzer gun is firing away. Ken Kraut moving up. Again, taking a bit of munitions there. Half and half so far on the map, though. Kampfgruppe Company up. Defensive operations up as well. We are probably seeing an attempt on Armored Courage soon, but at the same time, Motorpool is in fact up for 2 1 already. This could prove to be slightly problematic for the Panzergrenadiers of the second SS Panzer Division, Das Reich. I really love that name. I know that that's just something you know cool of calling a division Das Reich. Sounds a bit spiffy. Panzergrenadiers, though, are hounding on. Lots of fire. I've been getting slightly pushed back. Smaller moves up here towards the west. Jeep and no, Kettenkrat and engineers. No jeep strat here for the Americans. Five near, all those suffering heavily through the Panzergrenadiers behind the fence. Smaller push up here in the west. Engineers flamethrowers. Again, we probably will be seeing an armored car very soon. An armored car, a Greyhound to hound the Germans. Panzergrenadiers pushing up. Kettenkrat's moving in. There we go, Rifle Squad. Pushes away the Panzergrenadiers, although they are making out a push through open ground in the center. Could be a bit exposed. <laughs> Quite a bit exposed, in fact. And again, lots of harassment. Again, lots of resource denying from both sides. There we go, Rifle and push back. And of course, there's certainly also the aspect of attrition on either side. I mean, for every loss, generally, though, you can cause a Panzergrenadier player the better because, again, Panzergrenadiers are much more expensive to sort of reinforce. So, I mean, if you can trade one for one, then you're usually better off. On the other hand, if you're losing three or any more like that, then you're usually losing. Armored car, they're pushing on, forcing away to Panzer Grenadiers. And going in after the Ken crowd, thus denying amount of resources, damaged engine! The motor Brent. And there we go, he's gone luft up, he's camouflaging it. The Greyhound, of course, knowing what's up, moves in and goes, Hello, Hans! And blows it up. Pulling back, pulling back, nice. Although it looks like a full retreat. He's gearing up for another sort of major push. Yamakado doing his best to be a nuisance, of course, with one kitten crowd on its conscience. And that looked like a very uncomfortable position, except, of course, he was already dead. So comfort doesn't really come into it. The then, of course, we are seeing Panzer Support Command up. We are also seeing Armored Cars. We are seeing Anti-Tank half tanks, And, of course, again, the Anti-Tank half tank is pretty much the best resort because... It can pretty much immobilize the armor car, thus making it much easier to target Panzer Strex. Much too inaccurate, can easily result in you generally not getting anything off. Marlas can be outmaneuvered. Panzer 4 and Hotchkiss just takes too damn long. So in that sense, the anti-tank half tank is pretty much the best option. 50 caliber now mounted. The 50 caliber, a very powerful and American heavy machine gun, still used today. And in game, it's not exactly a sort of thing, thing to scoff at. It can do quite a bit of damage, in particular with veterans for some. That's just getting rushed off, and there we go. We are seeing now the punch again. He's probably going to spread it out a bit again. Armor coming about, and the anti tank half tech moving up. Panzer is suffering minor losses to the armored car. Two kills already, plus, of course, the vehicle kill. He might soon get veterans. And a second armored car. He's not, you know. Again, here's a slightly clever thing. 
Let's go have a look at two one, but let's actually briefly pause. I mean, what is he doing? Of course, he's you know pushing his advantage. He's not saying he knows there's going to be an armor. I mean, an anti tank half tank. So what he's doing? He's saying, "All right, I'll just get another armor can. Of course, I'll be able to overwhelm the anti tank half tank. At least my theory. That's what I would do. And of course, you know, knock it out. Hopefully, he'll be able to save this armor can. But I mean, generally, I mean, he should be able to get that anti tank half tank. Thus, ensuring at least he's gotten that. And of course. Allowing the reign of the Greyhound to continue. But let's continue. You know, with the match. Veterans you want for the armor car, the one moving up. And a Kengrak gets spotted. Engineers moving up, repairing this Veterans you want armor car. Anti tank half tech suffering. And another 50 caliber up. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh, oh armor car went down. That was a bit of a shame. That was a bit of a shame. That was very close. Very close for 2 1. Very close. That could easily have gone either way, I think. But Panzer is pushing up now, supported of course by the armored car. Pretty much there since the beginning of the war, although they were by the later stage of war actually replacing it because, well, four wheels isn't so great off the roads. The Germans found out. I mean, the heavier one, the one used for the Puma, with eight wheels, tended to be better. And almost they actually began converting half tracks, like say this one, into armored cars. You know, basically just giving that sort of turd onto that. So that's a little bit of fun, a bit of, you know, history. Ken Kratzberg is moving up here in the east. And we are seeing better run or hide, you know, trying to reform it. I mean, he's been pushed off a bit. I mean, 2-1 is largely holding the entire map. And we are actually seeing another armored car. More armored cars again. Armored skirts up. 50 calibers up, ready to fill the hun, the kraut. With a nice doses of vitamin 50. Panzer is moving up support. Do we see expert repairs? I don't think so. They're just, you know, hiding. Not waiting to advance until that thing's moving. Others oh, reinforcing. I mean, already here, I mean, already also, in that sense, I mean, it has all the free buildings for the Panther Paddle Group. I mean, that's a bit, perhaps, you know, a bit of an unfortunate amount of synergy. Anti tank half tanks moving in after the armor car, though, of course, another one can move in. Uh, German armor car, Panzer is moving in. The hunt for the Greyhound commences. Panzer is getting his salt in. There we go. Blocking the way. Gonna kill by auto cannon fire. Other one moving in. We are seeing overdrive. Kettenkrad down again for better run or hide. Oh, dear me. Engineers moving up. Armor car damaged engine. Oh, poo. And another blow to better run or hide. Very nasty, very nasty. Are the Greyhound moving in, trying to catch that anti-tank half-track? But no, it does not succeed, and the Greyhound sulks away. Panzer is enforcing try, of course, now desperately gain some territory back. And of course, those two Greyhound proving to be a rather perilous problem. Right there. Four better runner hide, of course. He does manage to immobilize one, but again, two Greyhounds. One light anti-tank half tank. Not necessarily going to end up happily. Panzer is trying to sort of cover up the flank, perhaps deny any engineers repairing it. Interesting enough, he's actually not rushing in engineers to repair it. We are seeing an additional anti-tank half tank arriving. Enemy unit down. Destroyed engine. And they're going to tank half tank. The engineers are actually blocking off this area, not repairing this. And now with additional, and oh dear, he lost the Greyhound right there. This leaves one Greyhound left, sort of stuck in a rut and desperately wishing the engineers were there. But they've got other things to do, like lay down the sparkly bar wire. Oh goodness gracious, armored car down. I think this was a slightly unfortunate case of priorities. At least one engineer team should have been left or squad to, you know, Fix this. I mean, this is not a bad idea. No wire and tank traps, you know, sort of delay the movement, hinder the movement of the Panzer Fleet, which can really be a big deal since, again, the Panzer Fleet, to a certain extent, also rely heavily on movement. They, If they can't really maneuver about, they are suddenly very limited in their combat abilities. Luftwaffe troops are being sent in to try and assist the 2nd SS. Engineers pushing on. Some are getting suppressed. Others are continuing again. The Luftwaffe troops not really in a good condition. Taking heavy losses. And retreating past all the wrecked German and American vehicles. A lot of shifting back and forth. 
And we are seeing a weapon support and he's not bothering with the pen with more armoured cars. But at least um, better run hard has managed to sort of stabilize the situation, although again he has suffered quite a bit a lot of troops there, but again, lots of armored vehicles there. I mean he's lost several anti-tank half tanks and an armored car. And not this sort of thing you go hallelujah at. More rifles sneaking up on the western flank. Again, pushing in harder now, of course, with the BAR upgrade. Increasing their overall firepower offensively and defensively. More Panzer and, of course, to ever stoic look for the troops are moving in. We're losing ground out Supply there. lines are broken. We have territory cut off from supply. And still no doctrine, though, for 2 1. He seems a bit recalcitrant in sort of. Choosing anything, which I think is a bit of shame. And there we go, the first snipe out for the Americans. Whoops, sorry for shifting about the camera too much. I do try, of course, to sort of keep it a bit calm, but sometimes I do misclick, I fear. Rafa and Engineers moving in. Oh, good, nice choice right there, slowing down, and of course, pinning down the Engineers, otherwise, those Panzers would have been slightly more flammable. But it might not be enough as a surprise group comes in. And sadly, the guests of honor run from this, you know, surprise barbecue. How rude. How very, very rude. Another armored car, and I mean, this is actually a bit interesting again. I mean, neither the players sort of just said, oh, we lo I lost one armored car. Let's not produce any more. And again, neither did, you know, better run has, oh, I lost an anti tank half tank. Well, I lost an armored car. Let's not bother at all. I mean, that's actually a pretty important distinction to remember. I mean, some players actually sort of think, oh dear. I lost this unit, I'd best move on. i best, you know, just stop making this unit. And just, you know, try to find something else to just throw a lot out of. And that's, you know, a bit of a fallacy, because sometimes when it's just bad maneuvering, sometimes it's just because, you know, you didn't have the right to support it. But in this case, I mean, we are seeing, you know, better run height, just thinking, okay, I'll just try again, you know, perhaps a bit better this time around. And sometimes, you know, just bring in more is all the solution you need. In particular now with all the armored cars gone, of course, question is, what will Chu do to respond? Now, of course, the Luftwaffe troops can assist by repairing the armored car. Hurrah! Oh, so... I mean, so now you're also seeing a mortar half tank coming up for better run or hide. Perhaps, of course, he's now sort of casually expecting, you know, anti-tank guns to be leveraged against him. So, of course, I mean, a mortar half tank in that sense tends, you know, to be a good move. Motor rounds flying through the air. More engineers moving up as well on the western side of the map. Anti tank and still some ways off. Armor car patrols in, hoping not to catch anything sort of American through its very, very thin hole. And there we go, the arm two cannon punching through them. One squad getting slowed down, but looks like it could be a setback a bit for better run or hide. Then again, I mean, these troops all clumbed up could also be a nice target for a mortar round. And oh, mortar rounds aren't hitting quite a bit. Oh dear, one rifleman down. There we go, pushing up, pushing up, trying to at least force things back, and looks like he is succeeding. Looks like he is succeeding. Panzer is getting burned alive. Chris Speed, in fact. Half text pushed back, armor car, and oh! Wirbelwind to the rescue. Flak Panzer 4, Wirbelwind. Moving in with its Flak feeling mounted gun in its turret. Heading through any sort of attackers. The interesting thing to note about the Wirbelwind, while it does provide suppression, I mean, it only provides it against one squad at a time, so it's more sort of the thing you know, want to you know, use if you want to sort of prevent someone from particular to just charge at you. Like, say, Rangers, Airborne, or something else silly, I don't know. In that sense, the Wirbelwind can work, but I mean, it's not just going to you know, 
stop an entire hall from charging you down, but I mean, it can stop one very particularly annoying allied person, you know, from running at you, because again, he's going to be, you know, shredded apart. Is that something a bit vital to notice, my gentle viewers? Look well, right, not all of you are gentle, some of you are slightly more aggressive. That's another matter. Mortar rounds. Anti tank and a bit of problem. Then again. Ooh, flaps. Being a bit silly, but there we go. And there we go. One hit for the mortar. Crew needs to pull back. Oh, nice hit. Rather advancing. Heavy fire again. 2 1 is getting pushed back. We'll be asking a tank depot up. He's probably going for either Sherman or some tank destroyers. To all units. Already there, the Beta Runner Hind has already suffered some victory point loss. And that we just saw actually air armor being chosen right there for 2 1. Again, that's something you can usually sort of expect. I mean, again, some doctrines like armor usually tend to sort of come in later. So, some place just figure, you oh, know, I'll just wait and you know, go for there. But the sort of tricky thing is, you actually gain this victory points in after certain stage. So, you can actually, you know, pay off if you want to go for it, you know, to just get it. But again, I mean, if you haven't seen airborne rangers, artillery, or strafing runs in for a certain amount of time, it's usually not a bad idea to expect, oh, right, he's going to be hitting me with armor doctrine. Troops are getting pushed back, armor coming in, some pinned down, anti tank gun in slightly dire straits. Be able to be moving in, trying to contain the nightmare. That is this rather serious American push. Be able to be opening up. More mortar rounds, but sadly they fall too far, and there we go. One squad suppressed again. Note it only does it with one squad at a time. It doesn't matter, the other chats were basically right next to it, feeling the Bullet straight right past them. They were completely unaffected. They don't care. Oh, it's not shooting at us. Joe? Oh, right, right, Bob. Let's just keep moving. Well, we are seeing the Hellcat moving up. And coming under heavy fire from the vehicle. And there we go. Moving in. And there's only an anti tank half deck to actually stop it. Although, again, that could essentially just bog it down until response is forthcoming. Panzer Support Command upgrade. Unterwegs. We actually just see a Panzer ready. That could also be a bit of a problem. And we are seeing a Kentrack cloak providing a bit of a radio post. Observing all the Americans do. And there we go. Hellcat immobilized. The enemy will never be able to match the efficiency Now's of the time for the Panzer Schreck to shine. Although, no, no one's just quite killed yet, but of course that might come. American forces are moving in, this area is probably going to get mortared continually. Which is also going to make it a bit harder, but we are seeing forces moving up on the western flank a bit as well. Main push though is sadly coming in from the same main route as all the mortar rounds are falling. That's, you know, perhaps less fought out. Be able to be moving in, armor car, troops are falling back slightly, you know, trying to pull back to some better positions than rather than just stand out in the open. Versus troops in heavy cover. And he is suffering a bit. Anti tank gun pushing up. Hellcat needs repairs. Panzer is getting shot up, getting murdered, getting gunned down right here in front of the railway embankment. Whew. Lots of action. What we like. Troops are holding out. We are again these that little Kemgret hiding about again, providing malleable intelligence. I mean, again, let's just you know pull up fuck of war. You can essentially just see what's all here. Also, quite you know nice spotter. But we are seeing a second Hellcat moving in, doing things slightly less wondrous. We are seeing a Panther battle group being researched. We are also seeing a help of the Abelvin in a slightly serious pickle. Rather than moving in, mortar half track also in a very bad position. The Abelvin down. Oh, heavy losses once more for better run or hide. Half tracks, the able wins. Oh, no, the, yes, the arm motor half track is out of control. Being behind only a light anti tank, half tank, and an armored car. Hellcat, though, continues. Second one moving in as well. Has to be careful, though. Although, except this, there's no Panzerschreck. Kein Panzerschreck. In the base. They are, in fact, retreating, though. Hellcat needs to be careful, though. And we are seeing an anti tank half tank. Will he be able to knock out? Immobilize this Hellcat? No, apparently not. Hunter, 
And looks like he's just going to pull out of there, do a bit of damage to the flak feelings, which of course could make an infantry assault a bit easier. In particular, if we can get this one. And there we go. Panzerik moving in. Oh, Bielbevin down. I mean, a flak feeling, not Bielbevin. Oh, Hellcat gets off an excellent shot on the gunner. Oh, clears out, in fact, the entire lot. Hellcat's out a bit better against him in some manner. I'm not entirely sure what, how. And looks like, though, fortunately, the Panzerik flew out the window most conveniently. Even as he died, Hans was a resolute soldier. Intent to ensure that Panzerik wasn't wasted, which is a good effort. Now, we are seeing the Kalabi moving it. Not entirely sure if he wants that against the Panzerik Air Force. I mean, soldiers are likely to do nothing. And in a sense, he must be expecting, of course, Panthers to arrive. I mean, it tends to be what most Panzer League players do. So, again, a Pershing would be a better choice. The Calliope's not really going to do much unless he somehow managed to land, you know, the entire barrage right up the Panthers' arse. We are losing a sector. So, we have the Hellcats 1, Veterans 1, in fact. Of course, question is, will there be more Hellcats? And, of course, wouldn't help more Hellcats in general have been better? But there we go. Panzer Kampfwagen 5, Panther Panzer 2 moving in, rolling in onto the battlefield. We are losing ammunition Armor car suffering a bit, Panzer is moving up as well. Supply lines are broken, we have territory. Hellcats rolling in, might not be aware, and there we go, and light anti-tank half that could prove to be the doom of the Hellcats. There we go, immobilized in the middle of the road. And I'm not singing. Or perhaps I'm a bit like anti tank half definitely managed to score a nice little victory right there for better runner high. Chu, I'm sure he's a bit upset. And there we go, Lion anti tank half gone. We are seeing Alan War Machine up. He's trying to you know, not, you know, blow them up, so he hands up free armor. And then of course Heinz in Panther number two messes that up. Other one, of course, he's trying to get away, but sadly that was the veterans who won, the slightly faster one that went down. Troops getting hammered, but again, no, Calipes don't really do much against Panthers. Armor car moves in. Suffering a bit there. Panzerkampfwagen 5 though pushes onwards for the fatherland. And of course again, Ken Kratz provide a nice line of sight, nice reconnaissance and of course nicely detailing the defences of Chu-1. And of course Chu-1 is none the wiser. He's of course not expecting there's a little Ken Krat eating a bag of popcorn or sauerkraut, I don't know, I'm not sure what gem will, will, will too surely say, probably candies. Anyways, you know, just watching this show and reporting in all what the Americans are doing. But there we go, small actually move up here, Kit wires down, Panzer is pushing on, and we are seeing Fortune Jaegers actually ambushing, excellent job right there by the Fortune Jaegers, and the Calliope just tries to crush them by sort of reversing, but for some reason stops. Oh, Forty Megas though suddenly taking heavy losses. Oh, so much to say. Oh dear, with Hellcats moving in, getting knocked out. Panther suffering a bit. Veterans one already up. Defensive Veterans he Calliope in a slight problem. He needs to get away. And no, he's going to fight straight into the Panthers. Hellcat down again. Two are on the way. But sadly, I fear this Calliope will be rather short lived. We are seeing three more Hellcats rushing in. But it will not be time enough to save this poor, unfortunate armored artillery thingy. And there we go, out of control. Still, Panthers are heavily wounded. Panzer Jet equipped Luftwaffe troops. Three Hellcats, anti tank, and getting recruited also by Luftwaffe troops. Everything's getting recruited by Luftwaffe. More veterancy for the Panthers. Panzer Jets. Oh dear, this could be a huge loss for Ju 1. He's not gotten a single bloody Panther. I mean, they're heavily damaged, but they are still there. Oh, he got a Kettenkrat, though. He finally got better runs. Hi, Kettenkrat. Take that, you bastard. And the Panzer are on the hunt for the Hellcat. Will the Hellcat escape? 76mm gun versus the high velocity 75mm gun. Rolling. Rolling. Rolled. Something like that. In the meanwhile, though, taking up the advantage of no armor. The RC-21 pushing up there and the anti-tank gun did not survive, it did not make it. They were left behind to push a heavy anti-tank. I'm basically going, thanks guys, see you in hell. Failing that Stalingrad. 
Anyways, armor car being pushed back slightly, and we are seeing an additional force mega squad. And the armored car went down again. He's ambushing. He's going in for the anti tank gun. Fortune Mega's elite German airborne infantry pushing in. Clearing out again the anti tank gun. Slightly clever little maneuver right there by Better Runner Height. And the Fortune Mega's were definitely elite. Except for like the f last six months of the war, in which case some of them were closer to false kind of ideas. Though they still actually had better morale in some cases. I mean, I believe. One pretty understrength, not heavily trained division still managed to hold up Patton's forces, although again that could have been seen more as an indictment that Patton perhaps, you know, had some issues. The but Fortune Jaegers are moving in. Anti tank gun actually crewed by Fortune Jaegers, that's a bit expensive, but I suppose he didn't want to sacrifice an entire Panzer in his squad. And Riven coming under fire, we are seeing Fortune Jaegers moving in from the north. The people been providing a nice wreckage. Only one whole cat left for 2 1, but I mean, he has managed to again do a lot of damage to better run or hide. And in fact, it's a better look. Time to go look at 2 1 again. Chewy! Forty Megas, Panzer Grenadiers doing what they can for the fatherland. Panthers getting repaired by Luftwaffe troops. That should hopefully work out. Americans advancing up once more. Three rifleman squads could do with another. Could also do with a medic station. But again, if he's focusing more on armor, I suppose not going to do much with that. And he's in fact getting both supply upgrades. He all had his one. He's getting a single one. That's great. Very lovely, in fact. And Panzer's getting single up by the rifleman. Taking some losses on the Panzer squad. Could be the next target. Fortune Jaeger staying out of position on the hill, opening up fire, trying to pull into some heavy car, but it could in fact be very too late. More Fortune Jaegers arriving with the FD 42s. Going through the right of an anti tank, and again, could be assaulted, but apparently it's not going to happen. No more Fortune Jaegers at least being called in. Pulling back towards heavy car, forcing in the Americans, of course, to attack. A position equipped manned by several Fortune Megas, which tends to be a very bad thing, as Fortune Megas are some of the toughest bastards in the game, and he's when it comes to killing stuff. Rather, in fact, suffering a bit nastily, ever so viciously, in fact. Oh dear, suppressor volleys off for su suppressor fire. Hang on. But suppressor fire from the BAR is a nice little ability. Can pretty much suppress any infantry unit pretty quickly, including Knight's Cross with Veteran C2, who do gain quite a suppression resistance bonus. Panzer is dealing with the engineers. Panther 1 moving up. Panzer is getting pushed off. Second Panther hiding in the far away corner. Getting fresh snipers again for. 2-1, he's again hoping to drain up the German infantry, possibly the Fortune Jaegers. They are also, you know, expensive to reinforce. Like Fortune Jaegers should be. Also, no better run or hide. It's actually been trying to use his Luftwaffe troops to lay down Y again. It's a bit rare to see, but again, it's not a bad idea. Though again, timing and position does matter. And the anti tank is hiding in the German base. Ready to sort of be pulled in as a reserve, I imagine. Troops now getting sniped. Ready. Getting several anti tank guns. He's not going to focus so heavily on anti tank destroyers, but more, you know, anti tank guns. Quite interesting enough. Supply lines are broken. We have territory out of supply. Being taken by the enemy. And some other Fortune Jaegers out here in the far east. Going to get a very nice experience, and there we go, run off. Oh dear, he. Did he just lose another Kevin Crown? I mean, they just. They sort of seem to just like combusting, and there we go. Panther charging in, going in through the high road again. No, vehicles and tanks do get a small speed bonus, or a considerable speed bonus, actually, when using roads. Which, of course, in this case, can mean a Panther can go very. Very fast. 
Pants goes in a nice building up there, holding back the enemy. Fortune is pushing up in the west. Better run the hide though, he's spread out. And wrong, wrong move could easily cost him dearly, perhaps even the entire game. Second Panther though could be moving. I mean, it is combat ready now. We are seeing a Lucky Stick company going up for better run or hide as well. Could be trying to increase squad size, I suppose. Forge Mega sniped. Sniper, in fact, already better than one. And there we go. Oh, caught up. Negative cover. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And grenades up for 2 1. More Panzer guys moving up. And he's actually getting pretty close to getting a Persian call in. If he's so fancied. Such a thing. Thought you may get sniped right through the head. Not quite what they were trained to do. Now he's getting shot through the head. More Panther goes moving up. Panther arrives. Not the veteran to 2 1. That is still hiding in a corner. And mines go off. Ooh, damaging the engine of the Panther. The Panzer come back in fifth. Tank destroyer just in a slightly more waiting position. Ken Kratz sneaking in. And we are seeing the anti-tanker moving up. We are seeing the Luftwaffe troops coming out to fight as they are trying to repair the Panther. Getting sniped, in fact. Though the ant managed to now actually put together the engine. There we go, though. Sticky bombs. And there we go. All that effort wasted. Almost down to half health as well. Although the Fortune Makers do provide a nice bit of cover as the Panther retreats bit by bit. And the Luftwaffe troops take a slight detour to sort of run back and repair again. But snipers are advancing, gunning through the Fortune Jaegers, providing that little task. Getting very close to getting a Pershing in. More rifle moving in. Fortune Jaegers pushed away. And there we go. The Panther gets off a nice hit, blasting up some riflemen. More but why? No, this is actually by two. Quite interesting. But there we go. Better run a hide. There's his own but why again. And a flesh mortar heart attack to actually bombard the allied positions. Looks like he's not bothering anymore. He's now in fact using all those resources coiled up to call in a series of tank destroyers. The question is of course might he not really just get a third one from there and you know just push in with four. Oh dear Ken got, got spotted again. And knocked out. Panther goes on the run. Others trying to hold the line, but no, they're not. Instead, Panther and some Fortune Jaegers holding up the west, which is a bit desperate. Panther coming under fire from the anti tank on Panther pulling away. Although, oh, Large has nothing to fear with its front armor, at least as long as it's not firing the anti tank on the is firing armor piercing rounds. Troops reinforcing, patching up. Anti tank and still not pushed in. I think that runner high could find some minor benefit. Of course, he could support his Panthers with an anti tank, and just in case you know of a tank destroyer rush. Tank here. Looks like he's once more trying to save up for the Pershing. And there we go. Three Hellcats on a roll. Trying to raise some hell on a Panther. There's a big cat, Fortune Megas, run off. Panther desperately trying to get out of the mess, and the other Panther still over far in the east on its own. Oh dear. Careful, better run a hike, careful. And there we go. Hellcat's rolling in. Although one is probably going to go down, although of course he could get off. Allied wall machine, come on! There, no, he's getting up field repairs! I think that might have been a mistake. I mean, that can happen, I suppose, in the heat of battle. Otherwise, I mean, he would have been have that, you know, tank destroyer replaced. I mean, against a Panther and anti-tank, and that's not going to do much. I mean, otherwise, you know, field repairs. Question is, will he be able to get that? Now, Veteran C3, Panther! There we go, Allied wall machine, although that is, again, a heavy expenditure of munitions. Right out of the window. And there we go. Panther down, but he's lost three Hellcats. 
And he got two replaced. I mean, again, I think he. Yeah, well, never mind. I definitely think he wasted a bit too much munitions for that, but now he could, in fact, get a Pershing. Our supply lines are being threatened. Increased squad sizes. I th bit perhaps too little, too late, but still could do a bit. You know, again, does increase the squad sizes. Does increase how much you know a Panzer Grand Squad can resist. Can also, of course, how much damage they can do. But again, two veterans, two rifleman squads are going to make rather short work of that. Interesting enough, he can call in the Pershing now, but he's not doing. It. He's just floating reason, just speeding up things just a wee bit, just a wee bit. Rifle continuing, Hellcat also continues in. Panther still keeping vigil over the east. And more tactic, there we go. Anti tank and Fulton Jaeger's Panzer Grenadiers moving up. And the Fulton Jaeger's squad number two moving in. Against the anti tank gun, Veteran 22 Rifle moving in. And there we go, a small retreat. By the 40 megas, although again with the anti tank gun gun, that again is going to be a bit of a blow. Moving up, oh, two versus a Panther, and we are seeing field repairs up again. He seems rather keen on not just you know throwing away units, although again in some cases it could you know mean the difference between you know knocking out the Panther and you know dying horribly. Pan Pershing has been called in, the M26 Pershing did not see action in Normandy though. One Panther. Hellcat down. Oh, the other one is in pretty good condition, I suppose. Fulton Jaegers run off. Pershing arrives, could also benefit from pushing on. But that is two Panthers down. Anti tank are now running up to try and protect these alongside a few Luftwaffe troops. Veteran D2 up for these Panthers. In fact, let's go return back to better run or hide. Who's probably going to get try and get another Panther battle group? Well, the Pershing is probably just going to try and blow up some crowds. Troops getting reinforced. Force Megas moving out, but well, trying to move out. I mean, with all that wreckage blocking things out, it's going, of course, going to be a bit difficult. Again, note, but wire. Going to make it a bit harder to reach that victory point. So again, there's a sense of tactics and strategy, and again, you know, using Luftwaffe to more than just you know get Fortune Jaegers or butterfly bombs, which you know some players do. And Panzer has dodged the first high explosive round, but will they be able to dodge the second one? What do you say, Hans? Well, I say, oh, shut up, Dane. Anyways, Panzer is forced away. Anti tank and left behind could have been recruited. Panther battle group somewhat off. Another tank destroyer. Reinforcement here. Go ahead. Moving up on the western flank, a sizable force. Fruits industrial quarters. Which rather abruptly end actually, considering things. Mortar half track but exposed. Anti-tank gun. Oh, Fulton Jaegers getting sniped. Oh, those naughty snipers. Anti-tank gun though does manage to escape. And more heavy fire against the Fulton Jaegers, leaving only one poor sort left. And the battle group. Very close, very close. Oh, so very close, oh, so very close. Another 40 mega ditch shot in the back this time around. Panzer's going moving in to reinforce. And there we go, Panther Battle Group arrives. The second column of Panthers. Moving in to assist. Right from here, getting suppressed. Oh, even the sniper, he could get slowed down. He could. Yes, indeed. He is gone. Executed by the Fulton Jaegers as vengeance for their brother. 
in arms to this. And we meanwhile we are seeing a huge bad rock going up here. Three Hellcats. Oh, t I mean two Hellcats. But one Hellcat now with a Pershing fun against two Panthers. Right in front of the anti-tank gun though, which is a bit bad. No allied war machine. That could have been nice. Panther down. And now he actually goes for allied war machine. I think, oh dear. I can't help but feel that Chu might be panning a bit every time he has to use those abilities. Because he ends up doing using the wrong thing. In this case, field repairs would probably might be able to win them this against the Panther, but it's not just quite happening. Pershing heavily damage again. Field repairs, field repairs. But I think it might not happen. And there we go. Panther secured the kill in the name of the Fatherland. Bragging rights and all. Still, that was a bit of a nasty blow, and I do believe Chu is pretty much exhausted. And also a bit rude, or probably a bit upset after this. I mean, with these mistakes, I can certainly imagine he's a bit upset, but there's still no reason to take it out on the other fellow. But again, very close, very close. I mean, Chu several times was close to having the upper hand, but I do think it was rather that, you know, Allied with War Machine and Field Repair sort of mix something that seems to have cost him, which rather lost him the game, I fear. Plus, I think he might have done better with one more rifle squad, and the Calliope, I think, was generally just a waste. An earlier Pershing might have won the game, or just, you know, more tank destroyers, but... Otherwise, I'd rather think, you know, it was that misclicking of Allied War Machine and Field Repairs that cost him, at least, you know, misunderstanding the situation for it. Which, again, resulted in a loss of munitions most of the time, but also in some cases, you know... I mean, it probably, if he'd been able to get Field Repairs on that Pershing instead of Allied War Machine... He probably got in that panther. So there you go. Or well, at least again, Allied War Machine with those tech Hellcats. So anyways, there you go. Do hope you enjoyed this game. If you did, why not subscribe to your friends? And if you didn't, well, why not send in a replay of your own? This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.